doing stone inlay in wood turning. So items like this, this is a burl where we've inlaid into the natural timber, uh, into the uh, furrows within the burl. We're indeed a uh, bowl, this is a hollow form, it's got crystal embedded in the timber. So that's that's the, the, the stone in its natural form. This is malachite, another stone, beautiful green uh, and uh, high, high, uh, high rich, rich colour in the content. This is a, a calcite, pink calcite, there's also white calcite, there's also an orange calcite as well. The other form of uh, inlaying is this is carved out using a Dremel tool and uh, you then inlay with the stone. So what I was going to show you today is how do we do that. Uh, we'll turn a bowl on the lathe and then inlay uh, some material into that. So when we start turning uh, with stone inlaid, uh, we have to be conscious that we're not dealing with timber anymore. We're dealing with stone and therefore it's going to react a little bit differently. So stone is measured by a thing called the MOH scale, measure of hardness. It's been around for 100 plus years. And stones are measured from a 10 rating, which is a diamond, through to a 1 rating, which is talc. And what we're going to be dealing with are stones that are around the 3, 4 and 5 measure of hardness. Now the steel tools that we commonly use to cut uh, won't touch the stone, uh, the, the, it's too hard. So what we use is uh, an em what we call emery paper, silicon carbide paper, which has a hardness of 9. And we're using, we're going to start with a 60 grit paper and we move up through the grits uh, until we take the stone back. touches on a camphor laurel bowl and what I'll do now is I'll uh, inlay just with a, a parting tool uh, about a quarter inch cut, about a quarter inch across and a quarter inch deep, uh, three mil and then, uh, and then we'll use that for inlaying the stone. So just putting in a reset into the timber so we've cut a recess there about 3 mil and we're now going to use that to inlay the stone. Okay now it's important to remember that once you insert the stone in uh, to the recess you can't cut it with your tools at all. So the way you do this is you, you fill the recess with the stone, trying not to spill it everywhere, and gently move it through into the various recesses. And the same applies if you're hollowing out using the Dremel tool. You just, uh, but I would urge you to use do one colour at a time. Don't try to inlay patterns with different colours. Now aim here is to get the stone just above the recess that, uh, so that you've got a slight doming effect over the top before we start adding the glue. Always do this in a well ventilated area because the glue can be quite uh, toxic. Finally, it's then just a question of tidying it up and getting all the, uh, the stone heaped over the top of the, the recess. So the final step then is to, to uh, add the glue. This is just uh, a, key, a CA glue or a um, uh, super glue. And it's important that you use the, a, a very liquid one. You can see the, uh, the liquid in this bottle, uh, how fluid it is. 
It's then a question of just bringing it over the top and flooding the recess with the super glue. Now this does take some time to dry. I don't, ex don't uh, suggest you use the accelerant to, to make this dry quicker because unfortunately it won't get through into all the penetration into the little furrows where the stones are and so you'll find that it don't, won't dry completely. You put it back on the lathe and you'll find that you've got super glue uh, coming out everywhere. So give it at least 24 hours to dry. Okay, so that's now uh, ready to set and we'll come back to that tomorrow. So we could start by sanding, by putting the thing back on the lathe and holding the sandpaper against it. Uh, unfortunately we'd be there for hours because every time we hit the stone it's going to knock the sandpaper away from the stone and uh, until we get the whole thing down. So when we're dealing with something which is uneven like the stone that we've inlaid, uh, we'd suggest that you um, take it off the lathe and use a, a power drill with a power sanding, with a sanding attachment um, on velcro backed paper uh, to bring the uh, tools, the uh, stone down to uh, level. Okay, so we're using a 60 grit paper and we're using a small uh, uh, drill sanding pad and we can start that process like this. And you've noticed I've kept the, uh, the, the, the bowl in the chuck, uh, so I've just taken the chuck off and holding it in the vise because that lets me uh, bring it, put it back on the, uh, the lathe in a moment. Now even if this, this is 60 grit, you'd expect the 60 grit on a camphor laurel bowl would eat away at the timber. Well, it will if I let it, let it go, but uh, while you're on top of the stone, uh, it won't hurt the damp timber at all. Now, the other choice you've got is rather than using a small disc, you can go to a large disc and turn with that and then move it around. Okay, so once you've sanded back uh, the um, uh, for the first pass with the stones uh, we need to now add our second coat. You'll see lots of little holes here uh, this is because we've we've filled up above the, the level of the, um, uh, the initial recess and we've taken it down and we've uncovered all these different hollows. So we add the stone uh, into the uh, onto the top just as we did the first time and we fill this into the recesses. Now the trick here is to use smaller and smaller stones and, and uh, then fill them over the top of the holes and then add the glue. Now you can see we've done uh, two coats, two layers of stone and we've filled the second, second layer of stone with a smaller grit uh, and now we've come out, we've now up to 120, I'll move up through the grits uh, now to a, to a uh, 320 grit. And you see we've got a nice finish. Now's the time to whack it back on the lathe and finish our sanding and polishing. So we're back on the lathe again. We've got the lathe running at low speed and using the power, power drill attachment again. Again with the uh, emery paper or the uh, silver carbon paper. Uh, we're now just going to bring uh, this back. And you can go up through the grids as you would with any, uh, with any sanding. The difference here is and we'll continue to, to take this 
um, this star down as well, which the uh, sand is going to have in. So we're just going to finish off with some triple E, which is a cutting compound, and we can use this to uh, cut back the timber and the stone as well. So now we're just going to finish off with some uh, friction polish. Uh, apply the polish. And we'll have to do this to the rear side of the, uh, the bowl as well when we uh, finish it off. Apply the, the polish. So there you have it. We have uh, the finished bowl on the lathe with the uh, stone inlay and uh, we've finished off with a triple E and a, a friction polish to give that nice uh, inlay a bit of a polish. So you can obtain all the materials uh, for doing stone inlay from Pop Shed. Thanks very much.